right, our first guest this morning is an internationally best-selling author. Sarah Bladell has been voted Denmark's most popular novelist four times in part because what? of her series featuring Detective Louise Rick. Well, this book is the first book in an entirely new series. It's called The Undertaker's Daughter, and it's set in a funeral home, get this, in Racine. That's right, we are thrilled to welcome Sarah to the yellow couch. Thank Welcome you so to be here. Our, Thank you so much. It's yeah. so great to see you. So Thank you. So <laughs> you like it. Welcome to be here. Yeah. It feels like a Monday today. <laughs> Exciting to have you here. So you grew up in Denmark, but you yeah. set this book in Racine. Had you been to Racine before you chose it? I haven't. No, I haven't. But I've heard that Racine is, is the city with the largest population of Danish people outside Greenland. Did no you know way. that? Right. Racine, Wisconsin exactly. has the largest population of Danish people outside of Greenland, Greenland. which is a part of Denmark. Yeah. Wow. But that was so interesting for me. So I said, oh, I need to go there. I need to, I knew <laughs> you need that. You to see I, your people in America, in Racine, Wisconsin. And the first, the first person I met there when I came, he turned around to me because I went to the tourist office asking, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm a writer, I'm here to do research. And then he turned around and said, hi, ja Jensen, which is, hey, I'm Jensen. I said, like, <laughs> okay, good. Oh, that's I'm so I'm on cute. a Danish track, yes. What's fascinating about this book, speaking of, of careers you don't often see women or men mm -hmm. doing, in this, this book, your main character is a young woman who's an undertaker. Exactly, yeah. How did you get in touch with that profession? Yeah, that was actually because my parents passed away five years ago almost, and they died with only three days uh, between them. And I know that it was very empty, of course, for me, but for them it was perfect because they have been together all their lives. Was all it a case lives. of a broken heart? You know, sometimes they say maybe, that with... Maybe it was actually because my mom died first. My father, he was at the hospital, so he and was very sick. And it was like okay. she was coming back and saying, hey, life, now it's time to go. Yeah. And he did. Aww. And they they came, as I said, and they went, as I said. And now here, now it's five years ago, it feels really good for me that they left together yeah but i expected but hard though too yeah and empty yeah, yeah. yeah yes hard. but uh, you know i expected the undertaker the funeral director to be a man mm -hmm. an elderly man i don't know i had a picture <laughs> in my head and there stood a beautiful young woman and she was taking care of it in a way that just felt so natural and she grabbed me and i was so impressed on the way that she was dealing with it and she was handling my grief and all the practical stuff in it and I was like mm, I think my next protagonist needs to be a funeral director interesting <laughs> so that's what you chose so yeah. how did you th did you research it then did you meet with funeral directors that were females I actually did yes in Denmark uh, I was working as an intern in a funeral home <laughs> which was kind of wow new to me yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I uh, when I'm writing my books for me it's very important to to get this the stuff Right. right. Do the research, know that I know how to handle the material when I start writing. But when I then came to Racine and people there were so nice to me, I was invited in, in two different, very different uh, funeral homes and was sh having a tour there and a show yeah. where I could ask all the questions. And the interesting thing is that uh, dealing with the, with the funeral business is so different here than it is in Denmark. So in America, it it's is, yes. what's the difference? We, we do not, in Denmark, we do not embalm people. Oh, we oh. that, is, that is actually, if, if we have to fly them out of the country, then we do. But, but just for, for the funeral, we don't. We don't do uh, Are open people caskets. always cremated? Very often, not always, no, hmm. not not always, but it's getting more and more common. Okay, okay. Uh, and then the open casket. So you wouldn't thing. do that if someone's not involved? No, no uh, uh, yeah, Could but, you? We do, but we don't do it. That's you don't it. do open caskets? We don't caskets. do open caskets. So I had to learn so many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it was so interesting. I what mean, do you think of it? You know, when I if you grew up with, because mm -hmm. uh, I think of seeing an open casket as, um, an opportunity to say your last goodbye, even though I, you don't feel them there if you're a spiritual person, you know, you kind of don't feel that. But it's an interesting last moment with mm -hmm. someone to like say mm -hmm. a, a goodbye visually. But how do you feel about to, that practice? Yeah, but to begin with, actually, I felt it was a little bit weird and a little it bit too weird. much and a little bit over my <laughs> line. A little of extravagant. Comfort but, line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But now that I've been doing my research and, and uh, being introduced to I actually think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because it is a way to say goodbye. And I learned that in Denmark, we are much more distance to death. 
and it's beautiful to say goodbye in that way i feel yeah like you're having these charms for example with you can put ashes in yes. this but, but is that one of them no or, it oh, isn't okay. it isn't i have my parents um uh, letters here in yeah. it oh, instead cute. but it's it makes a lot of sense when i get to get used to it, I can see, okay, we could actually get a little bit closer to our beloved dead ones in Denmark. So for me, I mean, it's always, a, it, it, it's always so interesting seeing how culture is different. Absolutely. Real quick, give us a, a quick pitch about your book. What happens to this protagonist who's a female undertaker? And that is not with a goodwill. I mean, she is, she's a Danish woman living in Copenhagen and her father left her and her mother 33 years ago and in all these years she never ever heard a word from him she had tried to find him tried to reach out to him but never ever heard a word until when after after he's dead mm. and he's reaching out to her in 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 a will asking her uh, to come they they ask her to come to Racine and confirm that she is his biological daughter so a lot of things will take take uh, action from there because it's um, she maybe shouldn't have gone. Oh. <laughs> is it a crime novel, a suspense it's novel? More, it's more like a suspense, and this is the first out of three books. So we will continue. It, it, it's very much about secrets, what have never been told, all the things that he have been hiding. Why did she? Why did he leave Denmark? Because there is, of course, a reason. And she is in the middle of this funeral business, dealing with a lot of things that she is not used to. Because that's what he left to her, right? Exactly. In the will, he left a funeral, a funeral home. home. Yes. I love that's it. Wild. You've got a signing tonight, so people can come meet you, yes. get a copy of the book, um, Crime Story Magazine. That's who it'll be with. It's tonight at seven o'clock at Boswell Book Company on Downer. You can learn more about this book and all of Sarah's books at sarahbladell.com. Thank you so much for being here. So really great to meet it. you. Thank you so much.